In this video, we're going to recreate a micro interaction that you would see in a Discord input field. The code for this project comes from the programming expert. Check him out on Instagram and YouTube. Links are in the description. We're going to start out with a blank project. We have an index.html file, style.css, and main.js. In the head, let's go ahead and add our link to our style sheet. And then in the body, we're going to have a label. Within the label, we're going to have an icon. And it's going to be data dash feather equals hash. We are going to use an icon library called feather icon. Very easy to implement. Next, we'll add our input. This is going to be a type of text. And we're going to add a placeholder. And the placeholder is going to be new channel and then we're going to turn spell checking off so we're going to set that to false all right so then let's add our scripts so again we're going to use the feather icons library so we'll import that and then we're also going to add our main js all right i'm going to save that and now we can see what we have we have a default styled input here and in order to see the icons, we do have to initialize the feather icons library. So to do that, we'll go to the main.js file. So here we're going to initialize feather icons. So we're just going to do feather and then replace. Save that. And now we can see our icon. So the way that this works is feather icons actually takes this I tag and it replaces it with an SVG. And that's going to come into play when we get to our CSS. So let's go ahead and start working on the styles now. First thing that we'll do is import a Google font. We're going to use Open Sans and then we'll set some defaults. So we'll do HTML and body. We're going to set the height to 100%. And then in the body, we're going to set a margin of zero. We're going to display this as grid. We're going to place the items center. And then we'll set our font family to open sans. And we'll set a fallback of sans serif. Right, after that, we'll target our label. Go ahead and save that. And we can see that it's centered now. So in our label, we're going to set a position of relative, and that is so that we can absolutely position the icon, which is actually, like I said before, is the SVG. So we're going to say label SVG, and that's going to target our icon. We'll set a position of absolute. Pop, we'll set to 50%. Left is going to be one rem. And we're going to transform and translate y negative 50%. Let's save that. So now we can see that it's positioned inside of the label. Let's also set a color on this. So initially we want the color, kind of a grayish color. And on the body, I forgot to add a color to the body. So we're gonna set a background here of almost black. And then we're going to be changing the color. So we're going to set a transition on the color of 0 0.2 seconds. So next we're going to change the color of the SVG when a child has focus. So when the input is focus, we'll change that color. So we're going to target label and then focus within and then the SVG. We'll set the color and it's going to be an almost white. Now, and when we focus on this, oh, now let me make sure I spell this right. Label, there we go, that's a little bit better. Now when we focus on this, we can see that it changes and we've got a bit more styling to do. Let's move on to the input. So now label and then input. We're gonna set the font family to inherit. Most elements will automatically inherit the body's font settings, but there are a few elements with exceptions, and the input is one of them. We're also going to set our font size 
1.2 rim, just a slightly larger than normal. And we're going to set the color. And that's going to be this almost white. We're going to also set the background. It's going to be an RGBA value. All right, we'll save that. Looking good so far. Let me zoom out a little bit. Go. We're going to set a minimum width of 12 rim. Now we want to get rid of this default outline. So in the CSS, we'll just say outline none. Now when we click on it, we won't see the default outline that appears in some browsers. And we're going to set our border to 0 0.15 rim, solid and transparent border radius. And we'll set that to 0 0.4 rim. Now we have a slight border, it looks much better. And then we're going to be changing the border color as well as adding a box shadow. So we're going to set transitions on these. So we'll say transition, and that's going to be border color, 0 0.2 seconds. And also on the box shadow, and we'll set 0 0.2 seconds on that as well. All right, so now let's make it do stuff whenever we focus or hover. So after that, we're going to change the border color on hover. So that's the label. And then on hover, the input. We'll set our border color to an RGBA value. And it's just going to be slightly darker. Get rid of this extra parentheses. And now as we hover, we'll see this slight border show up. All right, next, we're going to change the color of our placeholder. That's going to be label and then input placeholder. We'll change the color to our gray color. And we're also going to set user select to none. Save that. And I feel like I forgot some padding, which I did. We'll go back up here to our label input. And then let's add our padding. One rim on the top, 1.4 rim on the right, one rim on the bottom, and 3.2 rim on the left. That's going to separate it from our icon. Zoom out a little bit. That's looking much better. All right, last thing we're gonna do in the CSS is we're gonna change the border color and add a box shadow on focus. So we're gonna target our label and the input focus. We'll set our border color and our box shadow, which is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0 0.4 rim, and then an RGBA value. All right, let's save that. Now as we hover, we have the slight border, and then when we click on the input, we get our colored border as well as our box shadow. It looks really good. All right, so now as we type in this input, we can do whatever we want. But we know on Discord, when you create a new channel, you're not allowed to have spaces. It has to be separated by dashes. So we're going to implement that functionality in JavaScript. Let's move on to our JavaScript. The first thing that we're going to do is get our input. So we'll say const input equals document dot query selector, and then input. All right now we're going to listen for changes to the input. We'll say input dot add event listener. We're going to listen for the input event. Then we'll have an arrow function. Now we're going to use regular expressions to format our input. We want to replace spaces with dashes. We also don't want any double dashes or dashes at the beginning. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on how regular expressions work, check out my regex video in the description. But what we're going to do is take our input value. We're going to make it equal to input value dot replace. Replace takes two parameters, what we're looking for and what we want to replace it with. So we want to replace spaces with dashes. So a regular expression is defined by forward slashes. So we have two forward slashes and within those we define what we're looking for. A backslash s is looking for a space. 
Now we want to make sure that all spaces get replaced with dashes. So we'll say space plus. That's going to look for all spaces. And the last part of this is going to be G. We're going to add G so that it globally looks for spaces and replaces all of them with dashes. So in order to get it to replace the space with the dash, we need our second parameter, which is what we want to replace it. And that would be a dash. So the first part is what it's looking for. And the second part is what it's going to be replaced with. So now if we save this and we try to type a space, we're going to get a dash. If we try to type another space, we're going to get another dash. And we don't want that. So we need to fix this functionality. So we can chain onto this. We can add another replace. So we can say dot replace. And we're going to add another regular expression. So this time we're going to look for dashes. We're going to look for many dashes. And we're going to look for them globally. And we want to replace those with a dash. So anytime it finds multiple dashes, it's going to replace it with a single dash. Let's save that. Now if we enter a space, we get one dash. If we enter space again, we still only have one dash. Now another thing that we need to fix is we don't want a dash at the beginning. But we're going to add another replace. Keeps formatting it strangely. We're going to add one more replace here. And this time we're going to look for a dash at the beginning. So the caret symbol looks at the beginning of a string. We're going to look for a dash at the beginning. And we don't need to look globally because we're only looking at the beginning. And we want to replace that with nothing, just blank quotes, nothing. All right, let's save that. And now if we try to add a dash at the beginning, it's not going to let us. So now if I type something out, and then I hit space, I'm going to get a dash. And if I try to hit space multiple times, I still only have a single dash. Now we can clean this up a bit. We can define these somewhere else and make this a little bit easier to read. But before we set that, we're going to define our regular expressions. Okay, so the first one we're going to define is replace spaces with a dash. Okay, so we'll say const rx spaces is what we'll name it. And then let's just copy this. Cut it out and we'll put it here. And then we can paste that here. So we can define these up here. They're easier to edit if we ever need to edit them down the road. Let's add our next one, which is replace multiple dashes with one. All right, so that's going to be rx dashes equals. Then we just take this regular expression, put it here, and then put that there. And then our third one is our remove a dash at the beginning. We'll say const rx dash start equals, and then we'll take this one, that there and then put our variable here. All right, so now if we save this, we should get this exact same functionality. I can't add a dash at the beginning. I can't add multiple dashes. It's working just the same. And now it's easier for us to manage this down the road. That's gonna be it for this video. Be sure to check out The Programming Expert on Instagram and YouTube. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.